Previously on Black Book. Vasilisa acquired the church towel after a unique exorcism and then discovered that she had to escort a madman to a cemetery to get a church knife that she needed also. You reach the Cherdin Town Cemetery. It's much larger than the one you're used to in Vilgert, but much smaller than the one Vakul had. Ribbons of fog sliver between old tombstones. It's quiet here. Too quiet. You find an old shovel and take it with you. Right. You got it? Well, I'll dig. We'll deal with her now. In the meantime, I'll draw a circle.
The Keeper pierces the powerless pig with his knife, and she turns into an ordinary woman. Did you see that? Did you see that? While I didn't doubt that some witch put a Zagava on you. I knew it. This also happened to my wife. Some daughter used to wander around the house. Then my wife died of some curse. Now she got what she deserved. Sure, sure! Mikhail Nikiforich. What she deserved. Deserved! The old groundskeeper bends over the body and starts muttering something. Mikhail Nikiforich, let's go. Be quick. You take the knife. And before going back, you render the dead woman harmless. She won't bother anyone now. Dragging the old keeper behind you with quite some effort, you leave Cherdin. By morning, you'll bring him to his distant relatives. Will they be able to help him? With unhappy thoughts, you return home. So I went back then. Some witch was after him, then. I've heard about this kind of witches, the ones turning into cattle. All the lot are crazy. So, you've managed to deal with her? Good. Our business will benefit it. I've heard that the police were searching for Nikifrich, but they never found him. Maybe he'll be able to escape. Well, to hell with him. Kupala night is coming. What are you going to look for? The rumor is that there's a fever in the score. I'll go and find some corpses there, I gather. Be careful. There was one time when I encountered these demonic sisters. Don't expect anything good from them. They are cunning, and much smarter than your regular evil spirit. They lure you in, trick you. That's why there are so many fall victim to them. You think I'll be able to banish that demon? You be the judge. So little time has passed, but you've become this powerful of a witch. If you want, send her packing. If not, steal the magic ingredient and get back home. Well, God helps. Hurry up.
listen, Vasilisa. I need to fly. I can't live in these human holes any longer. I thought you would help me to break the seals. Arr. All right, I will. But in return, you'll help me find a forest. I've been settling the area. I think I saw one to the north. There's no master there. There! Help me settle there, and I'll help you with your book. Car, car. I will, if this forest is not far. It's just nearby. Let's go. Let's fly. Car, car. Wait, I don't have wings and no Kupala salve yet. Catch up. The peasants you meet bare their heads and bow in greeting you. In the village of Simonov, old Yegor is as respected as you will be from now on. Your old mentor once exercised a Nikota from three children at once after the local doctors gave up on them. After treating you to tea and a couple of buns, the peasants tell you of their latest trouble. An old hunter has gone missing, and they have already lost all hope of getting him back from the Leshi. One of the men saw a blurry shadow by the Tsidovka River, but fear prevented him from finding out if it was the missing hunter or some demons playing tricks. Smoke from burning incense curls under the low wooden ceiling. It is a hot and uncomfortable place. You shudder when an old woman sitting in a corner addresses you. To your surprise, she blesses you and advises you not to be afraid of evil spirits. The Leshi, she says, hasn't been seen here for a long time, but he used to carry off careless people long ago. Karnish leads you along the deadly quiet river. The impatient raven jumps from branch to branch and calls to you, hurrying you on to the woods and your destination. From time to time, you anxiously look around, but everything is quiet. Do you sense demons? Do you? No, doesn't look like there are any around except for you. Yeah, me neither. And let's not forget what they say in the village. This is strange. That old woman told us that there is no Leshi, but other told us there is one. And then there is this man who went missing. Not all Leshis like to play tricks in the forest. That man could have fallen from some stump by himself and died. Car, car. Hmm. You may be right, but then again you may be wrong. Perhaps there is a master here. I tell you, don't sense any Leshi. Leshi's aren't the only one who can be a master. Damp mist by the river curls around, 
spreading the scent of mushrooms and moisture. You gaze into the milky serum, trying to make out the figure the peasant told you about, but the mist only grows thicker. You whisper a Zagavar, and it reveals previously hidden demon tracks. Even you, a person unfamiliar with the art of hunting, realize what has happened. Demons caught a peasant by the river, and dragged him towards the forest. The tracks of evil spirits lead you to an old well on the edge of the forest. You stop overwhelmed by a sinking feeling. The dampness of the graveyard is also present here, far from the riverbanks. This can only mean that evil spirits are near, possibly watching you this very minute. The minute you close the circle, silent drowners emerge from the grass around you. You open your book and begin to form a Zagavar. The demons pushed the hunter's corpse into the well. It seems the Leshi wasn't at fault for the poor man's disappearance. You return to the village and tell of the peasant's fate to his saddened comrades. They don't forget to reward you for your help, despite the unfortunate news. At the edge of the forest, you notice a figure bent over a stump. This strange creature mumbles something, scratching his head. You stop in hesitation. Is this truly a demon? Ooh, Vasilisa, greetings. Boy, you sure scared me. But you came at the right time. Here, take a look at my charter. I wrote it for getting our lad back. From the Leshy, that is. I reckon... Half a bottle and a loaf of bread will do. What do you think? Well, the charter looks all right. But why do you think this is the Leshi's doing? I've heard that Chilforest has no master. Well, he wasn't taken by the army, that's for sure. Then again, I've seen a Leshi before, near Tsidavka. Stood right near me, he did. Lord Almighty. You can go see for yourself, being a knower and all. I've been there already. There are only drowners there. Jesus and his army. As if plain old dead folks weren't enough. Maybe this time isn't a leshy, but his sort sure used to set people on the wrong path around here. That's what they tell me. Anyway, I better head back home to Semenova. Better safe than sorry. A holy cross will help me.
The edge of the woods your companion chose is covered in a sticky fog. The Tsidovka River has spread all throughout the area, turning it into a swamp. It stretches its slimy tentacles around the high pines and majestic firs. Every minute, it becomes harder to walk. Straight ahead, you see what looks like an impassable bog. The raven swoops into the air and makes a search of the area. He advises that you go straight, as the swamp has stretched rather wide. You feel Karnish's impatience. He jumps from branch to branch, eager to get to the center of the forest, the central beam, the deepest thicket. You're just as eager to learn about the rite your companion is about to undergo. You struggle to climb through the prickly fir branches as you finally reach the most ancient of ancient trees. The ancient fir, the center of the forest, is leaning to the side, its roots sunk into the swampy sludge. At its foot, you have a peculiar encounter. Is that some kind of truth with the girl? Well, what did I tell you? You again! Be gone, evil spirits! Uh, be gone yourself! Are you blind or something? Don't you know this forest belongs to a cool? Yeah! Your master is not my master. A forest cannot belong to a Dinoy. No! No! It once belonged to no one, but now it belongs to us. We were here first. Either you leave, or I'll make you get out. You're not the boss of us. Wait a minute. Ah, oh, witch. And I thought you were a woman of your word. And that you wouldn't take that wench doesn't belong to you. But I'm not the vindictive type. Perhaps we could come to an, an agreement. We have a treasure chest nearby. An old one with the golden coins. Isn't that right? Yep. So, we're gonna drag it here, and you and your little birdie will be on your way. Yep. I know all about your treasure chest, full of frogs and fish scales. Hey, we're the frogs. Check for yourself if you wish. I don't need your pittance. The simple fact that you don't let the peasants leave in peace is enough for me to drive you away. And lay down the law of Akul. You'll be sorry. Yeah.
After the demons disperse into the darkness, it seems that the dampness of the graveyard starts to pull back from the heart of the forest. Karnish thanks you and starts whispering something in a leshy dialect that is unfamiliar to you. A second later, he himself transforms. <laughs> now, I am the master of my own forest. Take a look at this. It seems like your croaking has turned to a laughter. That the way we talk makes it easier to open the gates between worlds. So, what now? Going to settle down on your forest? Oh no, Vasilisa. I'm going to help you with your book. That's going to be of use to me as well. Who knows, maybe someday I'll break a seal for some other witch by myself. And don't you worry about the forest. Vodinois don't poke their noses in the forest that have masters. Especially after the kind of goodbye you gave them. <laughs> the instant you turn around, the Leshi assumes his regular form. Well, let's press on. I'll be of even more of use to you from now on. Car, car, car. I feel much calmer now, with a forest of my own. I used to feel like a pariah. I'm a junior after all. But now, with my own forest, no spirit can harm me. Don't fret, though. I won't leave you. You helped me with the Vodinoi. Now it's my turn to help you. I won't leave you hanging. Howdy, Vasilisa. They've been talking about you in the village. They say you'll protect from any evil spirit. Yes, it's my craft nowadays. Me and my sister-in-law were gathering mushrooms to the north of here. I thought you might be interested. Here, I brought you some mushrooms. So we were gathering them, and all of a sudden something howled in the woods to the north of Vilgard. On the road to his core, Lord forgive me. Clearly, a demon voice. We ran. I don't know how we managed not to lose all the mushrooms. All right. I'll check what kind of chart appeared there. Greetings, Yegor Ivlampevich. Long time no see, Tichon. They say a sickness has come to Iskar. Oh, a catastrophe! Me and my family had to move to my hunting lodge, the one by the river. Just to be safe. Something terrible is going on there. Yes, you better not brave the fever. I'm here on other business, though. We let these buff freeze in winter to get rid of the cockroaches. But come spring, there are armies of them marching through the house. We don't know what to do. Oh, I know of your problem, Tichon. 
You didn't call on any novers for your daughter's wedding. Now you have plenty of guests at home. Oh, Yegor Yevlampievich, forgive me. I come bearing gifts. Here, a piece of fur. Take it. Help me, will you? That's for my granddaughter to decide. Help me, mistress. I can't bear living under these conditions. All right. Tell me where you is by is. I'll drop in if I'm nearby. Oh, thank you. I'll go and tell my family the good news. Hello there. So, old Yegor, how you doing? Well, I can't complain. Here you are, to sweeten up your life even more. Ooh, some mash. Anyway, I have this problem. It didn't work out with the leshy. You don't say. Yeah, I've been bringing in mash. Now he's asking for offerings every night. Recently, it wasn't enough for him. He took my wooden plow. My new plow. Would you look at that? Well, my granddaughter is managing Kaldun business now. You live in Bolshoi Poli now, right? I'm going to a score, actually. Well, I moved to the new settlement to the east. All right. I'll drop by if I'm nearby. I'll see you soon. You stop just in time. Chorts sit on the branches of an old tree. Their eyes gleam while they wait for careless passers-by who forget to cross themselves. Thank you. 
You pass through the field where the woman heard terrible screams. This proves true. From the direction of Bolshepolsk's settlement, you hear someone howling. It turns out it wasn't a demon howling, but a dog tied to a fresh blockhouse. You guess the reason. It's likely the owner of the new Izba decided to make the animal into an offering, so that life in the new surroundings is safe. You decide not to ruin the future safety of the peasants, because without a sacrifice, the new house may be left without any kind susiedkos. You think about what sacrifices must have been made when they built old Yegor's izba. Despite the close proximity to Iskor, the peasants of Bolshoye Polya are unconcerned. Life here goes on its usual way, and the people don't even begin to suspect that dangerous chorts bearing a sickness may be close.
the villagers think that they have nothing to fear. They regularly go to the church and even visit Banya's. The settlement smells like new izbaz, and even in this late hour, the work here goes on. Someone is building a barn. Someone is fixing the tools for field work. You find the man who asked for your help. Despite his loss, he doesn't falter, and tries to make some substitution for the lost plow. Oh, Vasilisa, thank God, I thought you'd never come. You can't really roam around the region with a fever in Iskor. Right? I was nearby, so I decided to drop in. Well, I don't even know what to say. It's a disaster. Your wooden plow was taken by the Liashi? Imagine that! What a plow that was! A work of art! Tell me what's gone missing. Well, I know your kind doesn't really work in the field. But a peasant's plow is like your sorceress books for you. Can't do without it. We plow the field with it. And my wooden plow is the latest innovation of engineering. How I've been saving so long for it. And why does the forest master need it even? So you weren't on very good terms with Leshi, right? What do you mean, not on good terms? I have a field near the Fairwood. And I've always left him some offerings as is proper. Never had any problems. There? To the east? Right. Maybe you left him lousy offerings, so he punished you, no? God forbid, Vasya. I've been giving him even more than usual lately. And still he asked for more. Have you talked to the Lishi? Well, no. I left a charter near the offering. My granddad taught me one Zagavor. So, recently the forest master left a note that said to bring him more. More mash. Well, that's new. The Leshi writing something on a charter. I don't remember hearing that. So I brought more, and still he asked for even more. Wasn't enough for him. So he punished me. Today I'm bringing him another offering. You know what? I'll check on the Leshi myself. Give me that offering of yours and wait for me here. He may kill you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Here, take this mash. Well, see you soon. Why did the Leshy steal the plow? How will Vasilisa get the facts that she needed for the candidates? Find out next time on Black 